TSMC is in the news for the wrong reasons. The founder, Morris Chang, an ex, I think, Texas Instruments employee, he founded Taiwan Semiconductor uh, Manufacturing Company or Manufacturing Corporation. It could be either one. It doesn't matter. We all know it as TSMC. He met with Xi Jinping, which he was told not to do, and also met with Kamala Harris. Now, what happened with Xi Jinping? In Xi Jinping, he looks like he said something to the effect, congratulations. And then when questioned, why did he say, why did he congratulate uh, the Chinese Premier Xi Jinping? He said it was in his personal capacity for winning a third term. Okay, so we'll take that uh, on, on face value. What Morris Chang also said is after that, he returned to the United States and he said that uh, TSMC is going to be investing in a five nanometer. He also said that this is going to be a five nanometer plant to start with and then it is going to become a three nanometer plant. So this is essentially a division of TSMC that is going to come up in Arizona. They have a foundation day kind of thing, foundation stone laying ceremony where perhaps some people will be representing the Biden administration. Biden himself has been given an invite. We don't know if he'll show up or not. But the controversy here is why did he meet Xi Jinping? Remember that the United States wants to take off the crown jewel from Taiwan so that it is meaningless for China to uh, invade Taiwan. That's how many people see it, the crown jewel being TSMC. Now, um, as to who are all the beneficiaries of the CHIPS Act, one of them, of course, there'll be a part grant that will be coming to TSMC for having founded this plant. They, they are going to invest 12, $12 billion, everything is in billion when it comes to fat. They're going to invest, they say, $12 billion in this plant in TSMC. So let's take a look at how this thing shakes out for the various people. The CHIPS uh, Act, it's more or less around $45 billion, 42, 45. The number kind of keeps changing. I've even heard some much higher numbers, but this is how, at least at this point, people are seeing as the beneficiaries. Uh, TSMC will get some part of its 12 billion investment from them. And uh, Intel could get about 10 to 15 billion, Micron 10 billion, and Global Foundry, which is a, a relatively new player, about 1 billion. So you get the idea about all the different players who are getting funding from this new CHIPS Act that US has enacted. Once this funding starts and uh, the plant comes up, there's also going to be one more plant I heard in Oregon. So the TSMC is now going to, uh, you know, more or less move its eggs out of one basket and go into other places. Will this mean that it is no longer useful for China to invade Taiwan? Remember, you have to look at this in addition, in conjunction with what has been happening in China. The United States forced all the semiconductor fab support, manufacturing support companies, such as ASML, which is out of Netherlands, um, uh, LAM Research, Applied Materials. All these people have now come back. In fact, any of these companies, they are probably looking at a 20% shortfall because of all the business that they were doing in mainland China. That has to be made up somewhere. So we don't know, but you will see that this is going to start showing up in their margins, perhaps also in their stock price. Now, some of that can be offset by the CHIPS Act, no doubt, so, but it takes time. It's not going to be a flip of a switch that you're going to be able to do all these things. So that is one side. But let's take a look at what is happening to Taiwanese engineers who are actually working in some of these Chinese companies. Looks like Taiwan also has cracked the whip and said you can choose whether you want to stay here or be a citizen of Taiwan or you can go and work in China. Many of them are saying, well, I get paid two times the salary that I'm making in Taiwan. Why should I? Uh, give up my cushy job. This is just the average senior engineer, whatever, junior manager and so on and so forth. But if you go back a little bit, go back about 20 years, you will see that most of the fabs that were put up in China were done with Taiwanese money and Taiwanese investment, perhaps also with some investment from uh, the China. Like for example, take a look at H.H. Grace. It's usually called as Grace Semiconductor. In fact, uh, when I was part of a 
uh, chip company, we, we also found some of our chips in Grace. Grace was cheaper than the uh, Taiwanese companies. Clearly, they were trying to solicit new business. That's usual stuff. But the Grace company, Grace Semiconductor, who gave the funding? One was Winston Wong, who is the son of a Taiwanese business magnate, Wang Yung Ching. The other was Jiang Mia Heng. I'm sorry I, if I'm mangling the names. He's the son of Zhao Zheming, who was the general secretary at that point. So big heavyweights came in, pulled the money for Grace Semiconductor. It doesn't stop there. One of the brothers of George Bush, the then president, Neil Bush, got appointed as a consultant for $400,000 uh, payment. And, and then there was, a, every time he visited, he would get some, you know, travel allowances and so on and so forth. All this data is there in the references section, that is in the description section where you'll be seeing all the reference links. You can go and read up. My point in saying all this is, you know, every time any such major shift happens, there is some politician through his family member tapping something. Expect many more disclosures on the Hunter Biden story as uh, in the next months to come because the GOP is training its guns on the Bidens and, and this is going to be very, very interesting. But long story short, I think with <clears throat> more and more activity happening around fabs in the United States, uh, China probably will not invade Taiwan. That thing I see is probably not going to happen. Anyway, that, uh, this is just, again, speculation on my part. But if you take away the crown jewel, what, what control does China have? Plus, China also has to deal with the lack of technical support for its own investment. There are many companies, YMTC, for example, which was supposed to be the premium NAND manufacturer. Now, they will find themselves falling further and further back. And Micron will leapfrog with all these uh, grants and, and loans or whatever you want to call it using the CHIPS Act. Micron is a, a NAND flash manufacturer. In fact, I think that's the only NAND flash manufacturer that manufactures in, uh, in US as well as in other places. So Micron is going to be a beneficiary. SanDisk, which is uh, Western Digital, they also do this thing, but their manufacturing, if I remember correctly, is in South Korea and in Japan. So. Uh, long story short, what is going to happen next is that US will regain uh, its leadership in fabs, in semiconductor chips, and how long this will stay, we have to wait and see because already we are hearing that China is planning to get around the restriction of high uh, performing chips by trying to get some lesser than highest performance chips from uh, Qualcomm and then using those for some of their processes and so on and so forth. This is a game that all these people play. But you and I, the common man, will go and think that, oh, now US is going to lead. But there is more layers of gray than what meets the eye. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. Namaskar.